Okay, hey everybody. I'm gonna be a quick video to kind of walk you through some places you could get tripped up in the lab exercise, lab exercise of trying to find your own data. So I'll try to go through this quick, um, but hopefully this video helps you out along with the basic steps for the directions. So I'm at the US Census Bureau website. First thing I'm gonna do is click here to go to tables. And now you can get a lot of funky results from this. I want to try to keep this as quick and straightforward as possible. So for the exercise for us, first you're going to click Census Tract. You can then pick a geography. I would recommend you pick a, a, any kind of medium-sized state, you know, something you're kind of interested in. I'm going to go with um, Alabama. Then I'm going to click All Census Tracts Within Alabama. Select. You can see now I've got it narrowed down to about 2,000 results for the kind of different data sets the Census Bureau has. First thing I'm going to do is actually go pick the year that I want. And for us, I'm going to grab 2021. So now I've got two filters applied. The geography I want, Alabama, in 2021. And the last thing I need to do is pick the table or the results, the data I want to grab and download. I would recommend you could just grab, um, you know, this 0601 kind of housing. This is characteristics of the na total and native population. There's mobility, there's commuting. Um, any of those ones should work pretty well. And just a quick tip, if it's telling you table is too large to display, you actually want this to show. It'll format it the right way for us, as you'll see in a second. So I'm going to grab this just age and sex one. Hit download. And then this is going to deliver a CSV for me. This is a good test. Sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes you might have to cancel it and do it again. But hopefully it should just download. Okay, it just downloaded for me. I'm going to extract the file. And so inside of that file, um, that folder, it'll give you two different CSVs. The one will give you the metadata or the names of the columns, which is really important. So this tells you all the different fields and data sets that are inside of the data table. What is the code of the name of that field? And then what is that? The two we are most interested in are the estimates and then the margin of errors. So the estimate for total population and then margin of error for total population. Those two go together. If I scroll down to a random one, we've got the estimate of the total population for age categories, 5 to 14. And then we've got the margin of error for that as well. Here's a better example. Estimate, total population age 35 to 39, margin of error for the total population age 35 to 39. Next, I actually want to go open that data table up. Now this is kind of goofy. Now that we've got this open, we actually want to delete this second row here because it's going to mess it up for how it's going to pull in and import the data. So I just deleted that second row. So I have my headers here, which are just the codes, and I deleted that second one. And I'm going to save, close that file. And then within ArcGIS Pro, what we're going to want to do is import that file as a table so we can start analyzing it and using it, just cleaning up some of this other stuff. So. I can go to my catalog view here, and I've got my databases, so I can do that drop down, right click, or go to this database, right click, and then do import a table. And now I just want to go find that CSV file. So in my downloads, and then we'll grab this one, looks like it was just saved a minute ago. I have it there as my input, and I'm just going to hit run. So 
So it gave me a green check mark, so that imported great. I can do this drop down here and refresh this, and it should show my latest um, data table here. And let me just verify to see which one we just did. So we just did that 0101. And so here that is here. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to actually add it to the current map. Which kind of doesn't make any sense. We don't want to open it because we won't be able to use it as much, but we want to add it to the map. So here it is added to a map. And then I'm going to right click and open it up. So now you can see all these same fields, all this data imported in. And all of these field types, if I mouse over, we can actually see what kind of field this data is kind of recognized as. And it's saying these numbers are recognized as longs, which is good. It's kind of recognizing that as a number field, a numeric field. So then the steps in the exercise, I'm going to right click this, open this up for the data engineering view. And for the easiest thing that I could do is I actually want to go and create a new field to show the coefficient of variation for just the overall population. I would recommend that you do it for something a little more interesting than that. For all of these data sets, there are lots of different variables and values. So find one that's kind of more interesting. Maybe the total population of an age five to nine years old or I scroll down. There's sex here. There is, there, there's just a lot of data. I scroll down. What else do we have? Okay. Point being, you don't need to just do the most boring one. You don't need to just do the total population, which I'll do right now. So, we want to go ahead and calculate a field. So I'm going to go up here and actually add a field so we can create a new one. So calculate would do an existing, add will we'll build a new field for us. Actually, I think the calculate, we can just build a new one out. Yep, so the calculate field, perfect. Our input, the field name, so we want to have a new field name. In this case, I want um, pop, and I'm going to say variation. So what is that coefficient of variation? What kind of data is going to be stored here? Field type I'm going to call a float. That'll mean it'll have decimal places. And this is where then you're going to build out the formula for how that data is going to get calculated. So I just ran this because I wanted to test something, but I'm going to run it um, again to update this. This was something good that we did in one of these steps to kind of clean up uh, to make this a little bit easier. So what we want to do is just use the formula you have um, in the notes. So we want to take that margin of error for the same field and we want to divide that by 1.65. And for any of these things, you want to put them in brackets, again, just mathematically, so we know what things happen first. And then that is then going to be divided by the estimate for that same value. So the margin of error divided by 1.65 in brackets, and then that whole thing divided by the estimate, and then we're going to multiply that by 100 to give us just a percentage out of, out of uh, 100. And hit down here to see if the expression is valid. So it looks like it's good for Python. And what's happening here is we're selecting those field names. So we're saying that field divided by you know, x value, and this field name. So for each row, it'll grab the value from that field and then calculate it. Then I'll hit OK, and it's going to run. So interesting. So this is something actually to note in um, the submission you'll have because certain rows were actually set to null values because it couldn't divide by a zero. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that error. Took a couple seconds for that to refresh. And then at the end of the column here, I've got all of those calculated values for 
that population variation. So this is telling me the percent of, you know, that margin of error, how much I can really trust this. So the lower the number, the better it is. And for that, let me go back to the view I have here for the data engineering tools. I'm going to grab my population variation score and I want to add statistics and calculate. And here's how I'm going to get those kind of final numbers for me. So for the questions I was asking you to submit, um, we wanted to know the data you built the population confidence for. So in this case, I just did total population. What was the mean of the population confidence? In this case, my value would be 10.5 because I built that value and you know, added it into my data and then calculated that field. And then how many null values are present? And so right here, you can see I've got six null values that are present in my data set.